Hello everyone, in this video we are trying to learn time trace modeling in Earth engine. We are following this book remote sensing dot tip. Uh, this book is great resource to develop and learn the basic concepts. Uh, and there is this lab 5, we are following this lab 5. And uh, there is also this space in Earth engine tutorials uh, in the community section. Uh, and this two uh, chapters are same. So the community section has adapted the chapter from the lab 5. And this, uh, these things are, uh, I think, a little complex, uh, but this will be our attempt to understand and I will try to interpret them. And please go through the chapter ones. So I have already run this uh, codes. Uh, we can see some charts here in the console. We have different layers here. So this is continued by the Landsat image. So this is Landsat HSR. We can see that uh, we can see that this says that this asset is depreciated. Uh, we are just following this uh, chapter, so no worries for now. And here we have this geometry point, and then we have this time field. Uh, variable which contains this system time start and this will be used later then we have this cloud masking function uh, we see this everywhere most of the time so this hides the uh, cloud shadows and clouds and only presents the nice pixels for our analysis and this function also divides with some constant here so this is for the scaling and here we are selecting the bands uh, first to band 9. So here is a nice way to do this. Inside the single quotes we have this B and then uh, within the big brackets we have 0 to 9. And then we have this asterisk. So this is the way to select the um, different bands. And then we are copying the uh, time properties. And this here is this uh, time field variable that was assigned earlier. So these are the two beginning codes, uh, nothing new here. And then we are adding this, uh, this uh, NDVI here. So this is the important one. But before that, uh, in this function, we have this date. So we are converting that time fill into the date uh, variable. So this is done by ee.date. Uh, inside which we are getting this time properties from that image by dot get and then we have this years and then we are we are subtracting this year 1970 January 1st so this says that this is the time in fractional years since the epoch so this 1970 in the computer terms I think is the beginning of the uh, beginning of the years of the computer so this is the default year when um, when this sort of computing started, uh, but there are different ways to interpret that or different ways to say that. Uh, maybe computer experts know this better, but whatever uh, that is, we are subtracting this uh, this debt by our current debt, and this is um, uh, this is being received as the year. And then we also have this. Uh, band added. So we are adding the two different bands. The first one will be the NDVI. So the function that we see every time dot normalize difference. Uh, it selects the two bands for calculation of NDVI. And here we see the dot rename. This renames the NDVI. So this is the uh, adding of the bands by dot add bands. And this is also being done for that time or the years. So we will have this being added as the image and this ee dot image will make that uh, year as the image and this is being renamed as t and there uh, there will have this float uh, just the setting of the values so this is the second function here and we also have this addition of the constant band by e dot image dot constant so this gives us the constant uh, image and this will be added as the band so finally, we add our 
functions two different functions here masking of the clock and adding of that variables so we had three different uh, variables uh, being added to that landsat 8 as our image collection and we also have this uh, we're also bounding this uh, landsat 8 sr to our area of interest so till now there is no such new things and then we have this ui.chart.image.series so this creates a, uh, a, a chart and and here we are selecting the NDVI and for this will be for our region of interest for that point and our plot set chart type is the scatter chart and we have dot set options so this is useful for adding the title uh, and adding the line width and point size and also we have these trend lines here so these trend lines gives us that uh, straight lines and the color is given here so this can be printed as the chart so this is the uh, this is the chart we see in the console this is what we get after doing this so what we're seeing here are is the different dots and we have this red line passing through the middle of the data so this is till now we just uh, selected the Landsat 8 uh, image collection uh, we added some bands before that we had uh, masking of that clouds and this is what we get this is the Landsat 8 NDVI time series at our region of interest so the book uh, helps uh, for the interpretation and teaches us how to interpret the graph so we can see that there has been relatively large jumps in the data and there has been uh, upward let me run this again so it says that there has been some upward climb somewhere between March and late April so let us and the book also says that there has been descent in late August and and the general trend is downward slightly downward and in the February 2021 in the February 2021 there is a data point which is below uh, below every other points so this might be uh, causing some trouble for this line making it uh, come downward so in other words we're just interpreting the uh, trying to observe the uh, observe the points here and then we have this linear modeling of time so from this we are uh, jumping to the new sections new things so here we are listing our independent variables so the first one will be constant and the second one will be the t that time or or the number of years and then our dependent one will be the um, NDVI so after that we are selecting that uh, independent and dependent from the filter line set or our line set image collection and we are doing this dot reduce and inside that reduce we are doing ee dot reducer dot linear regression and then we have this independence dot length and number one so this just says that number of independence and number of uh, the uh, dependence and in simple terms this is what we are doing as linear regression uh, if we if, if we if we know r uh, in our programming language we most often use lm and we provide the uh, dependent and independent variable separated as the tilde so this is similar here uh, but in the orth engine terms so we are doing uh, linear regression here so we are uh, relating the dependent and independent variables and we can add here that trend as the image so this uh, trend we received is a uh, is an array image and this can be added as layer 
And what you can see here is that trained image is something a reddish and and blackish kind of image. So I don't know what is going on that one, but if we uh, try to jump inside, we can interpret this image as well. But this is the addition of that trained as the image. And here it says that uh, we have computed the linear trend. So this will have the two bands, residuals, and the 20 to 1 band called coefficients. And the columns will be for dependent variables. So this is the structuring of the, uh, of the result that we get. And from that trend, we select the coefficients. And this is um, flattened. Uh, to get the two band image. So this is done by dot edit project and simple in simple terms uh, What we are doing is we are selecting the coefficients and just flattening it or, or uh, making it drivable or or, or or as image uh, That we can visualize Because the data uh, we get is kind of complex So that is what's being done here and then we can detrain the original NDVI time series. And this is where we remove the slope uh, of the chart. And this is something uh, I think is the predict uh, in the in the LM function now. So this is just the way to compare uh, as the analog is or to compare with R to better understand. And then here we are mapping the function, we're selecting the dependent, we're subtracting it from the independence, we're multiplying with the coefficients, and we're reducing the sum. And we're renaming it as dependent, we're copying the properties. So what we're doing is uh, we did the linear regression, and we get some, uh, some values there. And from that received values, we are kind of predicting the new one, uh, and that's what we're doing. Uh, what we are doing here, and we get that uh, we get that smooth, um, detrended uh, data. So this this is what being done. What is being done here, and from that we can print the chart. So we have ui dot chart dot image dot series. We have this detrended. Our region of interest, scale, uh, our options for the title, and other things here, line weight and point size, and we can print the uh, chart. So after doing this, after going through uh, there is this number of lines here, uh, we get some we trained it Landsat time series, and the book again helps us to understand the. Uh, understand the graph. So we can see that now the y-axis is centered at 0 and the scale now ranges from 0 to 0 0.45 and this now focus on the cycle pa cyclical patterns. Before we had this uh, line going downward, slightly downward or uh, and and the, the points uh, were somewhat scattered so it was not very horizontal, uh, but now we can clearly see the difference after the trending of our time series. And then we uh, move to the next uh, next chapter, that is the harmonization. Uh, so harmonization is uh, the way to break the complex curve into some set of uh, simplified cosine waves, or uh, into the uh, with an additive, additive term. So what this does is this approximates the trend. So this will help us to understand the cyclical patterns uh, better. So for this uh, here, we have this harmonic independence. Again, these are the independent variables. Uh, so this, these are being listed. And these are the constant t, r cos, and sine. And then we have the the harmonic terms uh, added in that image band. For that, we have this in our image collection. We're adding the function or mapping the function, 
Then we are selecting this time property and we are multiplying it with the uh, 2 into the pi uh, doing the time in the uh, radians and then we are finding the cosine of that sine of that and we are naming, renaming, the, uh, renaming that as cosine and sine so these here is doing some mathematical operations selecting the here multiplying with some uh, 2 into pi 2 pi and then we are finding the cosine and sine value of that and renaming it as cos and sine so these are the harmonic terms for our uh, image collection and then we have this uh, harmonic train variable and that we are selecting the harmonic lens at this we just developed before and we're selecting the harmonic independence adding the dependence and again we are doing this linear uh, linear regression e dot reduce dot linear regression we have number of uh, x variable number of y variables and then we get the harmonic trend and that uh, and it says we are turning the array image into a multi-band image of coefficients so from that harmonic trend we are again selecting the coefficients like we did before we are flattening it uh, to make it more accessible uh, so that is the that is the main purpose here and uh, and then after that we compute the fitted values so what we get is the new values and we are kind of predicting the new one and from that we are mapping the function we return the image with the addition of bands here we are selecting the harmonic, indep uh, harmonic independence we multiply with the coefficients that we got and we are reduced by sum and rename it as fitted and the and we can fit the model and the original NDVI. So this is the fitted one here and NDVI one by ui.chart.image.series and this can be plotted here and what we get here is um, this one. So the um, the blue one is the original NDVI and the red one is the fitted one. So we can now more focus. Uh, we can now focus more on the on the cyclical patterns of the NDVI, and it shows more. Uh, the the course also still continues uh, with the computation of phase and amplitude. And uh, in simpler terms, phase is when the wave forms uh, has uh, two two upward uh, crests or trough has that difference within that so this is the difference between the uh, one highest point to the second highest point so this is the phase and here we can see that we're selecting the sine and we're selecting the cosine and we are seeing this new function here dot eight and two so i'm not sure what this does but this is how we're calculating the phase and this has been converted or scaled to the minus pi to plus pi and again we have this amplitude uh, amplitude is the uh, length uh, or, or the distance between the its normal uh, straight line to that upper uh, crest or trough so how high the wave goes so that is the amplitude and again here we are selecting the sine and selecting the cosine and we have this dot i part and i'm not i'm not sure what this does but uh, so this is how we ca uh, can compute the phase and amplitude and here we are also multiplying with with five so uh, what uh, why we are doing this uh, so the main reason for doing this is to add this as the new layer for the visualizing so we uh, select the NDVI here from that image collection and add it that as the mean and and then we have this RGB variable inside which we have the phase 
amplitude and the mean NDVI. Uh, this has been converted into HSP to RGV. So this is being converted. So these are the two different ways to visualize them. Uh, so different colors. Uh, and this is being added as the layer. And we can see uh, something like this. Phase, amplitude, and mean NDVI as two different bands uh, in the uh, map section. So what is the use of the time series modeling? The use of time series modeling is uh, to understand the changes uh, in the long term. For example, if we used to see some pattern in the NDVI curve, but suddenly there has been some changes uh, in which we do not see that uh, pattern anymore, then we can assume that there has been some change in that particular point. Uh, for instance, uh, we can assume there has been some urban development if the values of the NDVI has suddenly decreased, or if there has been some depletion of trees and pasture. So this this uh, in terms is called the time series thresholding to understand the graphs to understand or to interpret the graphs uh, and to assume the changes being occurred in that point so here are the codes uh, this this is similar to the before uh, so we have the point here we have our Landsat 8 image collection uh, the time properties in milliseconds masking of the function dividing with the constant here, selection of the bands, copying of the properties. So this is the cloud masking function. Then after we are subtracting uh, the 1970 with our current date or, or the date of the image. And then we're adding the NDVI, adding the time as the new band, then adding the constant as the uh, also the other band. So we are adding the three bands there. Then we are adding that uh, to our Landsat image collection, and then we are plotting the Landsat 8 NDVI graph. And we can print that, we can run this and see that chart. And this book uh, helps to read graphs very nicely uh, written here. So what it says is the NDVI has a maximum of 0 0.9 in the summer and a minimum of 0 0.4 in the winter. But between March 2018 to April 2018, the NDVI drops from 0.313 to 0.18 and largely stays below this value. In addition, the cyclicality is gone after 2018 and while there are some elevated values in late 2020, that is likely due to atmospheric conditions or sensor calibration. The linear trend is an indication of construction and perhaps a window function to average out the variability can help identify large uh, drops in the overall average NDVI for this test point. So this uh, paragraph explains pretty well, but uh, what it is saying is that from 2013 to 2018, we see some, some cyclical patterns here. But after 2018, somewhere here in the upper, we can see the value below 0 0.2. And this has been constantly below till uh, till mid of 2019 uh, and after uh, and somewhere after uh, before the beginning uh, before the beginning of 2020 we see the increase uh, of the NDVI but still this is below the cyclical patterns that we used to see before 2018 and this might be due to uh, sensor calibration but the sensor calibration is not all to be blamed uh, there has been some changes of course but um, what it further suggests, the paragraph further suggests, is that uh, if we can develop a window function to average out the variability, uh, we can identify large drops in the overall average NDVI. So this is the end of the chapter. Uh, and please go through this uh, chapter once. And there will be more uh, things to learn from this, of course. So I would just say thank you for watching. Any comments are welcomed. So thank you.
Thank you for watching.